Thank you. Yeah, hi everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. I really hope that you're enjoying the conference and having fun. Uh, actually, my topic is pretty much related to Dmitry Nikitin's topic because that is really going to be about self-development and developing one's, uh, well, your students' um, professional skills, right? So, um, well, as for me, I'll give you a couple of facts about myself. I've been teaching uh, business English for over 14 years now. But most of the time, you know, my, uh, my experience in my work with my students has not actually been about teaching English as it is. But instead, uh, what I've been focusing on with my students is to help them build their careers and improve their professional skills. Um, well, make them happier professionals, uh, well, and uh, achieve new goals and grasp new opportunities. That's why I want to share my experience with you today and uh, talk exactly about that, how you can help your students be happier professionals. Before we do that, let's have a look at uh, who needs our help <laughs> in their professional life, right? So first of all, that's entrepreneurs uh, looking to extend their business, develop their companies, their uh, projects, and, and so on. Second of all, that's uh, top executives who are, whose, whose goals are to elaborate and execute strategic decisions, right, in their business projects. Uh, then uh, I'm mostly dealing with middle management. Yeah, those are the people who are looking to expand their professional skills, who are looking for professional opportunities, uh, career growth, and stuff like that. And finally, aspiring professionals, those who are looking to build up their career um, and acquire new skills, well, well, get to understand what they need to work on. And here, well, what is your role as a teacher? In fact, uh, that is not to be a teacher, <laughs> right? So uh, first of all, you have to serve as a guide towards their goals, right? You need to help them achieve new, you know, uh, new perspectives, right? Well, open up new horizons. And here, you shouldn't act as a linguist or a teacher as it is an English teacher, right? Uh, rather, you could work as a coach, as a trainer, as an assistant. So how do you do that? Let's have a look at one of the tools that I use in my work that helps me uh, help my, my students develop their professional, uh, well, yeah, well, develop their professional and personal skills. Um, and um, here's the technique that I have been using for years now. It has no name, <laughs> but uh, I will present it to you. Hope it's going to help you. So the goal of the technique of unpacking one's expertise is to help your students be more efficient at work, uh, in their job, in their projects, in their business, and at the same time, help them be happier at work. So how do you do that? In fact, um, well, it's all about being aware of your own skills, your competences. And here are the clusters. Well, you have to talk to them a lot and ask them a number of questions. Well, I have classified those questions into categories. And um, well, your goal is to talk about their tasks about their job, about their responsibilities, things they have to do at work, but, in, and then cluster them into different categories. First of all, uh, talk about things that they like doing, something that they're inspired by, something they feel excited about um, at, at work. I'm sure everyone has <laughs> tasks like that, right? Second of all, uh, talk, about, uh, talk to them about things that they're good at. Maybe, uh, well, they have taught their colleagues to do things or things come easy to them. So try to identify the tasks and responsibilities that they're absolutely ace at. They could say, well, I'm an expert in that. I have good understanding. Um, then move on to the 
weaker points, right? Well, things they're not good at doing. Yeah, probably it's the things or the tasks where they need extra help or they have difficulty understanding or probably it takes them longer, a longer time to execute those, those kind of tasks. And finally, things that they dislike doing, right? So they're complaining about this kind of job, this kind of task, and uh, well, maybe, um, you know, they, they say, oh my God, it's boring. I'm so sick and tired of that. And well, here it is, right? Uh, you can see that the circles are kind of overlapping. And that's exactly that brings us to this strategy. So how do we interpret the outcomes of our conversation? Well, first, uh, as you can see, the like doing and the good at doing section overlap. And here we arrive at the strengths. So it's the strong points that, uh, well, of, of your particular student. And in order to be a happier professional, to feel happier at work, the task, well, the strategy for your student will be to maximize those kind of responsibilities, those kind of tasks at work. Second, uh, well, things that the person is not that good at doing just yet, but they love doing that. They feel inspired when, when executing this or that task. Um, I, I'm sorry, <laughs> that was the wrong one. Uh, so the things that they're not good at doing, and they at the same time, they hate doing that. that those are weaknesses. And uh, well, in order to, well, uh, you know, make your day happier and brighter, you should minimize those kind of tasks. Well, probably even eliminate those from your to-do list. Then uh, we're moving on to the section where like doing and not good at doing are overlapping. So things that you're not good at doing just yet, but you absolutely inspired by. Um, and those are developmental points, right? You just need to master, gain more expertise, gain more knowledge, develop your skills, and you're going to shine. You're just going to love what you're doing. And finally, the things that you are pretty good at doing, yeah, but you hate it so much. Oh, my God. And those things are called, well, I've called them lawn outgrown. So here, what you could do, what your students can, can do about it is delegate, right? So teach someone else to complete the forms, right? To, well, complete the tables. I hate doing that. I'm, I, I can do that, but I'm not that good about, I mean, I'm, I, I just hate doing that, right? Why don't I teach someone else uh, do, do, that, do the task that I don't like? And here are the questions for you that you could use when talking to your students. I mean, you can do it within a class, absolutely, individual class or group classes, right? You can even organize, uh, well, peer work or teamwork to talk about uh, those things, right? So here are the questions for you that you could use. Um, the questions for, uh, to discuss things that your students like doing. Here they are. I mean, I'm sure you can read them and take a picture. Um, well, the questions that you could use to talk about things that your students good at, right? Uh, things they're ace at. Uh, well, here are the questions to use when talking about the things that your students are not exactly exactly good at. They're where they would need some extra help or they're struggling with. And finally, the well. Here they are, two questions. Uh, well, the questions that, uh, that deal with the tasks or responsibilities they just hate doing uh, whatsoever or just don't exactly like doing at all. And uh, well, definitely you can come up with a great number of other questions. Well, it's just the guidelines for you to make a start. I really hope that my tips uh, will help you help your students, right? Maybe help yourself, help your teams, because you can use it at school, at your own school, if you're a school owner. Uh, I'd be happy if you, well, get in touch, if you need extra help or you need extra tips about how to teach business English and how to, to help your students. So, yeah, well, here's my contact. And, 
well, good luck at, at, at work and good luck with your students. Thank you so much for listening. So how, Rob, how was it? That was great. <laughs> Wonderful. It was, I'm just going to stop your screen. Okay. okay.